Let's now take a look at conflict theorist theories about deviance. Um, this is basically, there is, is, uh, unlike in some of the others where we have named theories, uh, conflict theory just tends to have an overall attitude or, or look at deviance in a very specific way. Um, again, one of the roots of conflict theory, we talked about the idea of uh, groups in society competing for limited resources as the basis of conflict theory. Uh, and a large part of it, again, we're going to talk about Marx, and we'll talk more about this again, but when we've already talked about uh, Marx and his theories about uh, society, we can talk about the haves and have-nots. In this case, we'll be a little more specific uh, and talk about the difference between the capitalist class and the working class. Okay? Um, so when we talk about conflict theory, we're talking about the conflict that exists between these two classes. Uh, the capitalist class, for the purposes right now of defining it, we'll talk about the class of people in society that, for the most part, buys people's labor. So in other words, they're the position of uh, ownership of the ways that things get made in society, and they pay other people to do work for them. And the working class clearly sells their labor, so they're the ones who are getting a wage for working for the capitalist class. And when we take a look at the idea of the makeup of society, and if we think about society as a pyramid kind of representing uh, society, we clearly know that the capitalist class, as far as a percentage of the population, is a much smaller group than the working classes. So there are many, many, many more working class people in society than there are capitalists. So when we look at society and we realize that the capitalist class is also represents, for the most part, uh, things like power and wealth, we realize that the capitalist class, which is a smaller class in society, has more of the power and money in society. So then, if you're just looking at that graphic right there, you would say, well, why doesn't the working class then overthrow the capitalist class? Again, this is kind of central to uh, Marx's thinking about society that, in fact, he predicted that the working class, once they gain, or remember we talked about um, uh, uh, class consciousness, or you know, realized that they are uh, part of uh, the working class and uh, do have the ability to overthrow the capitalist class, that they would do so. So what does the capitalist class want and fear? Well, what they want to do is protect their position in society, at the top of society, and what do they fear? They fear the greater numbers of the working class. So from a conflict theory point of view, uh, in regard to deviance, what we could say is the capitalist class controls and manipulates the criminal justice system to protect their own position in society. And once again, sometimes we, we, it sounds like it's verging on uh, kind of um, conspiracy theory and to a large degree you can actually make the case for a large part of conspiracy theory is based uh, on a lot of uh, uh, conflict theory. But basically what, we, what, what the theory is is that uh, when we talk about the criminal justice system, we break it down into its components, uh, law enforcement and uh, the, the judicial uh, system as well as corrections, uh, we can say that those are three big elements of the criminal justice system, and we look at uh, who makes the rules and who is in control of those, uh, of, of those three different elements. Again, we can, when we think of law enforcement, we think about police officers or cops, but we know that those aren't really the people in charge. Those are the people you know, who are, for the most part, on the level of the working class who are doing their jobs. When we talk about prisons, we talk about uh, who's in control. Clearly not uh, the guards walking up and down um, you know, in front of the, the cells. It's wardens and commissioners and other people in charge. We talk about the judicial system. We're talking about judges and justices. We talk about law enforcement. Again, we're talking about um, you know, uh, high-ranking officials and the people who make the laws in the first place, which you know, again, tends to be uh, uh, the level of government, Congress, that kind of thing. So, and the majority of those people, according to conflict theorists, their interests lie in the protection of this class system, okay, where capitalists uh, have the upper hand and advantage over working class people, and that they then manipulate the criminal justice system to keep the working class divided up, okay, uh, to keep them uh, locked up to a certain degree, 
keep them involved in the criminal justice system uh, so that they can achieve that level of class consciousness that would allow them perhaps to become a danger to the position of the capitalist class. So like I said, once again, this sometimes sounds, uh, like I said, very conspiracy theory uh, type of thing, but one of the things we can look at is are there different standards for uh, punishment of violations of norms or crimes in our society? And we could definitely look at, and one of the things that supports this uh, notion of the conflict theory uh, interpretation of this, is are there different uh, sanctions put on different types of crimes committed by these two different classes, even if we just break society down to capitalist or working class? And clearly, we can see there are. Uh, when we talk about working class and we talk about the types of crimes most often committed by working class uh, people, we could generally kind of lump those together as what we call street crimes. So these would be drug offenses, uh, uh, violent offenses, um, you know, uh, things involving stealing, uh, committing other types of violent behavior, like I said, drug dealing. And when we look at the sanctions or punishments inflicted by society on those, they tend to be much harsher. Uh, there's a lot less room for uh, what we might call uh, mercy. Um, there's a lot of times penalties for uh, repeated offenses. So we talk about the idea of uh, three strikes uh, and you're out type of offenses. And then we can flip the coin and say, what about the types of crimes that are most often committed by the capitalist class? We tend to call those things white collar, corporate crimes, we talk about things like fraud or embezzlement, um, tax evasion. And when we look at the penalties for those, we see much less. But if we were to look at the overall effect on society, again, street crime like uh, when you talk about the three strikes rule, and again, this is supported uh, by, 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 by facts, by information. Um, you know, uh, there are people who are in the criminal justice system who are serving life sentences for things like uh, stealing a piece of pizza or a pair of socks from Walmart uh, because of the three strikes rules. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, a person who embezzles millions of dollars or engages in fraud on a massive basis and cheats thousands of people out of millions or billions of dollars uh, is likely to receive uh, probation or what we sometimes call that idea of country club prisons or uh, you know, or fines, that kind of thing. Uh, so we definitely know that in our society, the difference between white collar or corporate crime and street crime are, are treated very, very, very differently. Uh, and again, to, con to this theory, conflict theory, uh, we would talk about the fact that that is, again, the capitalist class uh, manipulating the criminal justice system uh, to protect their own position in society.